operating in a different way. Pittsburgh is generally very draft and develop. We're going to play stick by our principles. We're going to be conservative. I think they're operating with more urgency than they have in eight years. Russell Wilson might be a Steelers type signing in that it only costs him a million dollars. But just kind of making a trade and we got to take on some dead money. That's not what they do. I'm telling you, they're not done. Watch out for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I if there's a game to win today, I know a lot yes. of people would prefer a Russell Wilson because you've seen him yes, do it at the I highest would. level for a longer period of time. A I would bank on Justin today? Fields. But you would what? No, what? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying I understand picking Russell Wilson. I'm saying though, like whether it's a game to win today, whether it's for this season or whether it's building my team, I would rather gamble because it is a bet. It is a bet. I would rather gamble on Justin Fields potential. Yes, I would personally like I'm we're talking about either. the market of quarterback. If I'm Atlanta or if I'm Pittsburgh and I'm looking at the available veteran quarterbacks, I would rather Justin Fields untapped potential than the fumes that Russell Wilson is running on at this point in his career. Well, um, we had a lot of questions and we got answers or we think we got answers on Saturday night uh, with a with a massive trade. It was massive because of the name or names and franchises involved, not because of the compensation, right. uh, but a right. massive trade that changed the landscape and the outlook for two of this league's most storied uh, and flagship franchises and, and being the Steelers being a storied and flagship franchise. Russell Wilson, he visited the Giants. The Giants said, hey, we ain't no guarantees you're starting over Daniel Jones. So Russell Wilson went into Pittsburgh. Okay. And Mike Tomlin. Yeah. And Mike Tomlin did his thing, his Tomlin thing. I'm sure he dropped some Tomlinisms on him. And in Pittsburgh, I know you've been to the facility. When you walk upstairs in the facility, you walk by this row of Lombardis. And you can't help but be uh, filled. And you can't help but feel the history and the mystique uh, in that building, in that city, really, a, a silly, a city, I beg your pardon, that, that you went to school, uh, what was then Point Park College. Uh, it is now Point Park University. Uh, shout so you out know the you Steel know, City. Shout out the Pioneers. The Pioneers. You know the Steel yes, City sir. quite well, uh, as does Russell Wilson. He understands the history. Uh, and may I say, my man looks good in black. Here is Russell Wilson at his introductory press conference. I was fortunate to have several teams call and all that, but this is the place that I wanted to be. Uh, be the Pittsburgh Steeler and to, to wear the black and gold. It, it's a true honor. It's tradition. It's history. Um, it's, it's, there's six trophies in there, and we got, we got to go get a seventh. Do you come in here with the mindset that you are the starter? I come in the mindset of just being the best version of me every day. You know, it's, I think that's always the plan. What we're trying to do is, uh, you know, for me, you know, I, I want to help our football team win. I think that's the job of the quarterback. You know, role is to help the, help help the Pittsburgh Steelers win, and that's always been the goal every day. And so, um, you know, it, the goal is to you know get more trophies and to do the do do, do everything we can to win. You know, listen, I've never been a numbers guy. You know, what I care about number one is wins. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is you know, touchdowns do matter. You know, uh, <laughs> those help those help those wins and solidify them. So, you know, I, I'm used to you know being in the end zone, and uh, we we got to make it uh, a, a priority to get in there as much as we can. Never been a numbers guy. Okay, Russ. Anyway, but we, no, we're not going to focus on that. We're not going to focus on that. All right, look. But here's the I love thing. It. Speaking of numbers, speaking I of numbers, um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the early odds are, if there are odds for this right now. But uh, my man Omar Khan, who I've known for 20 years, another son of New Orleans, Omar Khan is the early favorite for GM of the year. And who's to say how this works out? But I don't. I can't recall a more shrewd uh, and a more cost-efficient overhaul of a positional yes. room, especially yes. a quarterback room, than what the Pittsburgh Steelers have pulled off by getting the Denver Broncos to pay Russell Wilson to play for the Steelers, to pay him $39 million, where they only pay $1.2, and to get Justin Fields on a rookie contract for a grand total investment in these two quarterbacks of $4.44 million. Michael, you and I were going back and forth when we played the flashback a second ago about which of these guys we would prefer to have. Omar Khan and Mike Tomlin and the Steelers and, and Rooney family said, damn it, why not both? <laughs> we'll take all Four the reclamation five. projects. Four, Four and five, but that's five. us. Four and, Four and five. <laughs> we'll take Those them both. both. Hey, hey, you know, I was, 
I was laughing off the top because first of all, I, I didn't catch the first time that really nasty takedown you had of Russell Wilson. You said of the fumes that he's running on. That was just <laughs> that, was, that was so that was so unnecessary. Like why why did you have to do that? Why why you why why why? I just wanted to know why. Uh, that's one. That's one. You know, two. You make it personal. You, but you, I, I've said this before. You make it personal when you say stuff like that. You said to me, as, <laughs> "I make it you personal. make it personal." I didn't say no, that about because you make it make it bigger than it you is. Said you said he's running like, on why? the field. Why? Fumes. Why do you have to say that? As if there's the some reason fumes. other than football. Fumes. Shoot. The man had what? How many touchdown passes did he have last year? Twice as many touchdown passes last year as Kenny Pickett in his career. Kenny Pickett in his career has 13 touchdown passes, which is unbelievable in two years. 13 touchdown passes? Are you kidding me? Uh, and, and Russell Wilson last year had twice that many. So that's one. Two, you said he looked good in black and gold. I like, uh, it's, of course it's Russ, and I, I'm going to give his wife credit for this. The black suit and the gold is really gold. I mean, that's a nice touch, though. That's a nice touch. I'm not going to put in like a gold pocket square. I'm just going to wear a gold chain. What's up? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think, I think the Went Steelers. Went to Mike Tomlin's barber and whatnot. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did. He got the line. The line. He's, he's almost. He's, he's close. Crispy. Trust me. You about. <laughs> he almost Russ, got. You, you got to come home. You about to come you home. About six months away. <laughs> you about six months away. Uh, I, I bet you. Uh, I bet you Tomlin goes somewhere in the Hill District. Get a nice line. That's what I went back in the day. So we're in the hill. Get that nice line. Six months, and you're going to have to give up the ghost. You have to give it up. Because I can (laughs) see it right there. I can see it. It's it's almost time uh, to be bald. But I think the Steelers disagree with you, Michael Smith. I think the Steelers have made it clear that Russell Wilson is their starting quarterback and that Justin Fields is here to do what he probably should have done from the start, I know they have to say this. They have to say they have to play the game. I was about to say, respectfully, respectfully, the f- does that matter in March? <laughs> okay. It's like, I mean, because I'm sure, I'm sure uh, they told him hey. you're going to start when they signed him. You know why? Because the alternative was soft as Kenny agent. Pickett. Losing him. Well, yeah. well, not just that, but was soft as Kenny Pickett who ran from the quarterback competition to be Jalen Hurts' backup. So let me get this straight, sidebar. Let me get this straight, okay? University of Pittsburgh's own Kenny Pickett, guy that they knew, guy that they were comfortable with. He was literally in their building. Okay, hey, um, Kenny Pickett says, hmm, I don't, oh, I was misled. I don't want to compete with 35-year-old Wash Russell Wilson. I'd rather go oh, for right, certain be a backup. No, he's I'd rather washed, for and certain, I made it personal. No, but no, keep going, I was, no, I was in character. I'm in character. I'm in character. I'm saying okay, if I'm Kenny Pickett, okay. if I'm Kenny Pickett, why am I being run out of town by Russell Wilson? Right, like, as, as opposed to running into the arms of Jalen Hurts. Like, I mean, like, I just, that, at a certain point, you can't throw a tantrum and cut off your nose to spite your face. Which is what he did, okay? But enough about Kenny Pickett. He's destined to be a backup. I, he, well, let's not even waste time on Kenny Pickett. He, he, he didn't want. He didn't. He didn't want to fight. He didn't want to fight for his job because, to me, and, I, and and reportedly he was supposed to do a workout with the receivers, and he canceled it when he found out about he Russell Wilson. He canceled the workout. See, that's a, so, see, to, that's that's the bigger that's the bigger sin right there. Look, hey, everybody, your receivers can kind of they'll get down with you off campus. Whether I don't know where the workout was in Jersey, where he's from, or somewhere else, maybe a nice destination. You know, uh, the good quarterbacks take these receivers somewhere fun, take them somewhere sunny, take yeah, them to take Miami, them to take them to LA. Yeah. Hey, hey, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. Hang out, we'll hang out. It's it's not really about throwing; it's about bonding. We'll throw some, do some uh, pitch and catch. But we'll also uh, have a good time and just hang out and be boys. Like the, your, your fellas will understand if you have a problem with management. You know, ripping the boss is an American tradition. Everybody understands that. But you canceled our workout? So <laughs> you didn't get what you wanted? So you just go cancel our hangout, bruh? Well, it, okay. and apparently this is a continuation you of, lost of, the of his now. temperament. Now you lost the of room. His temperament, but of his temperament when it came to Mason Rudolph at the end of last season, right? But here's what I'm saying. Like, yo, read the quarterback room. The Steelers are paying Russell Wilson $1.2 million dollars. That comes with no guarantees. They have less of an incentive 
for Russell Wilson to succeed than they do Kenny Pickett to succeed. And a lot of people, myself included, tried to give Kenny Pickett a pass, better passes than he often threw because he was, mm. he was deal, dealing, with, dealing with Matt Canada. Okay, so now you got Arthur Smith, in, in theory, an upgraded offensive coordinator. Like, I don't care what they say in public. I don't care if Russell Wilson is, on, is, is QB1 on a depth chart in March, if he's introduced at a press conference as a starter. You're always competing. It doesn't matter what they say. Right. You're That's always true. competing. I know. And so, that, so now going back to Justin Fields, I don't care what the Steelers say right now. This is a quarterback competition. Does Russell Wilson, because of his body of work, because of his reputation, because 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 of, of, of uh, or, he was the first guy in keep going. Does, maybe you'll get there. No, keep going. No. Or does he, does he come in? Does he take the first snap and all quarterback or he's better maybe. playing the position and maybe and maybe Justin maybe. Fields has more maybe. upside in, in you maybe. Know, next year or the year after. But right now, right now, Russell will take the first the snap. That's, That's all they, he's guaranteed. They to do. Him, he's guaranteed to take the first snap. In, in, in off season practice. He's guaranteed to take the first snap of training camp. Okay. He may even take he may even start the first game. He may even start the first game. But I'm telling you that I ain't talking about no special package. I ain't talking about no no read option package. I ain't talking about using uh, uh, Justin Fields as slash 2.0. My bet your money. Justin Fields will will see the field and be the Steelers starting quarterback and that six round pick in 2025 will in fact be a fourth round pick in 2025 because I have been playing more than 51% of the snaps this year. He will okay. he will supplant Russell Wilson Ooh. in this offense and that by the way multiple things can be true. Russell Wilson could be an upgrade over Kenny Pickett. Russell Wilson yeah, could be a is. no brainer right a no brainer bargain signing by the Steelers. And Russell Wilson could find himself in a better position to succeed in Pittsburgh than he was in Denver for a litany and a myriad of reasons. Okay. At the same time, Justin Fields, and we'll get to Chicago in a second. Justin Fields was failed in Chicago, and that's why they did him a favor. But let's stay in Pittsburgh for now. Floor is yours. You said he was failed in Pittsburgh. No, no, no. Chicago? In Chicago. We'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. We'll get back to no, that. No, no, no. I, I just like, want to hear what you said. I want to know. That, yes, that's he was what, failed. You said failed. Chicago the failed Bears him. Failed him. Yes, they failed okay. him, which is why they did him a solid favor. But go ahead. Continue okay. on your rationale right. why All Russell right. Wilson uh, is no. clearly a better quarterback than Justin Fields right now. Well, I know he, what the numbers well, say. I know Justin Fields was well, awful in the fourth hey, quarter. Listen. I know. I know what his career numbers are. We, I, I get it. I get it. I, I, we don't have to go there. We don't have to go to the advanced metrics. I mean, we, we can take it way back. We right, ain't got to be advanced. Keep it. Be basic counting. Basic go, counting stats. <laughs> we can go one plus one. Two Fields plus is not two. Good. The, the numbers do not do support Justin stuff. Fields. Yeah, you said last week. I think you said uh, you made a reference to, you know, one of my favorite comments. I, I judge you by uh, what you do, not what you say, right? Um, well, I, I can't I can't hear what you say because I see what you do. Yeah. And look what the Pittsburgh Steelers did. What the first mm -hmm. thing they did immediately, they needed to solve the quarterback problem. The first thing they did, and I know a sequence, you could say, hey, the sequence where the guy was available, so they went there first. But Justin Fields, we've known for a long time that the Bears are going to have the number one pick in the draft. We've known for a long time that they were not going to keep, I mean, it was pretty obvious, especially at the combine. It's pretty obvious they weren't going to keep Justin Fields. They were going to go with Caleb Williams or somebody else. First thing the Pittsburgh Steelers did when they wanted to make a move at quarterback. First thing they did was contact Russell Wilson. They got Russell Wilson in the building first because it was most important to get him in first. He was also and free. He's also free. There was no negotiation to okay. be done with the team. Well, he had well, permission hey, hey, to seek a this? trade. If or using that logic, teams. sure. I'm with you. See, I'm, I'm on your side here. He's free, which makes him attractive. But using that logic, no, I mean like teams free to in the talk NFL. To him. Half of the teams in the NFL should have been going after Russell Wilson. I really feel like that. I mean, he's better than a lot of these quarterbacks who signed. He's better than Gardner. Didn't Mitchell we already do this? Percent. Okay. Hey, okay. I'm just saying, well, I know. But it was. Yeah, okay. But those guys cost him $8 million. I'm talking about in a cap space. In a cap league, when you're trying to put the puzzle together, yeah. the Patriots paid $8 million for Jacoby Brissett, 
and Russell Wilson right. is there for a million dollars. I mean, come on. I like it, that, that's that's a no brainer for most of the teams, whether you is think it? he's great or not. A million dollars, I'll take a chance. Sure, sure, sure. It is. Okay, no, it is. well, but there's there's but, taking a chance, but, and there's do you prefer Russell Wilson? Sorry to interrupt you. There's taking a chance for 1.2, which is a no brainer. It's but do you prefer Russell Wilson over any it's, of the guys made. that were signed for, for more interruption. money? But it was, but that was signed for more money, and, I, and and those two things are mutually exclusive. You know, okay. it's the, I mean, what, what, sim, what what you're saying about Russ and how you can't believe that more teams weren't after Russ would right. be the same thing that I would say about how the Steelers got Justin Fields for a six okay. and twenty five, and it's like the okay. market seems to disagree with us about both these guys. You about Russ and me okay. about Fields. Okay. Let me just say it this way. I told you the stats. This is very simple. Justin Fields played 40 games. 38 as a starter. He won 10 games. Mm -hmm. He won 10 games. <laughs> like, he won oh, 10. Oh, oh, like, that, oh, so, that's okay, hard. So now, see, that's hard see, to do. Pet peeve. Yes, that, and quarterback stats peeve. count for that's me. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's they not. count for me. No, yes. it's not. Yes, yes, Wins yes. and losses are not quarterback a quarterback stats. You they're show not. Me, no, they're not. You show no, me. No, they're not. Show me a good quarterback. Show me any good quarterback. I will let you have the field. I will give you the merger. I will give you the last 50 plus years of professional football. And you show me a quarterback who is 18 games. What is it? 18 games under 500 Am my math, right? 18 games under 500 and is a good quarterback. Show me one and then I'll apologize, but I don't think you can. So those quarterback stats Every okay. now and then, so and, and there's some exceptions. Like you're from New Orleans. You mentioned New Orleans earlier. You know, Archie Manning might have something to say about it. Hey, I came to a bad so just situation. To, I was a good quarterback. So check this whatever. out. But just just to show you how I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fair man. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a peaceful man. Just to show you okay. how I understand what you're saying. Okay. Just to show not only do I understand what you're saying, but just to show you that I don't have blinders on for Justin Fields. This is from NBC Sports Chicago. That I, okay. I mean, this is this is a statistic. But as cited by NBC Sports Chicago. All right, let's hear. It, let's hear. It. Out of forty quarterbacks who threw at least fifty passes in the fourth quarter this season, mm. Fields ranked 39th. Let me say that again. Out of forty quarterbacks uh, who threw at least fifty, pa Four. out of forty <laughs> who threw at least 40. fifty passes in the fourth <laughs> quarter this season, Fields ranked 39th okay. in passer rating at 53.4. Only Bailey Zappi was worse. Woo! Fields ranked 28th in yards, tied for 26 in touchdown passes, and was tied for the his second work. most interceptions in the final quarter. Hold on, there's more. There's more. Woo. There's more. 31, 31 quarterbacks threw at least 20 passes this season while trailing with four minutes or less remaining in the game. Fields ranked 29th out of 31. He ranked 29th Ooh. in passer rating and 28th in completion percentage and was tied with Jordan Love and Aiden O'Connell for the most interceptions. So Fields was awful when the chips were down. Okay, so maybe that contributes to that 10 and 28 record you're talking about. However, again, all I'm saying about Justin Fields and all I've said about Justin Fields and all the Fields truthers in Chicago are saying about Justin Fields is while he may have his flaws where he may still be lots raw in some areas or he okay lots of them. Or he may just not be good. I and that's right. Perfectly plausible. He may not be good, which would be on brand for Chicago, which would be on brand for the 2021 quarterback class, right? The entire absolutely class. absolutely the entire absolutely class. but Chicago over the past several years has not been the best environment to determine whether or not he's good. Okay, because juxtapose that and again, I don't want to get too into Chicago in, in their future. Just I was going to say, I feel like but, I feel like the preacher is about to give us a transition. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but juxtapose, I'll just say briefly before we get into just how good feels is or isn't juxtapose that with the circumstances that Caleb Williams or some other quarterback, and that's an important qualification, is going to walk into in Chicago. Where Ryan Poles is in the nesting process right now, like like Sarah and Oni did for each of our three children mm -hmm. in the nest, yep. getting the room ready, getting it painted getting just right, done. getting it decorated right, Gotta just get it in done. the nesting process. Okay. Yep. Whereas Go Justin over there. Fields, pick that up. Justin Fields, put that down. <laughs> over there. Ju Justin Fields had 
to, to, to struggle so that the next guy can flourish. He warmed up the slot machine for the next guy. You remember that reference, right? No, nobody want to warm up yep. the slot machine for the next person. All right. And so all I'm saying is I believe that there is more to Justin Fields than what we've seen in Chicago, whether it's because of coaching, whether it's because of personnel or lack thereof. Okay. I just think that I think there's there's better days ahead ahead for him. And so you put him in Pittsburgh with an Arthur Smith. Okay. With talent around him on the perimeter. Man, look, Mike Wood, Mike Williams signs in Pittsburgh. Go, going back to what you were saying about this being a new day in Pittsburgh and, and then being urgent and aggressive in a way that they aren't traditionally. Yeah. Let Mike Williams sign yeah. in Pittsburgh. Okay. So now you get a like you go into Pittsburgh with an Arthur Smith with a better supporting cast than the one you had in Chicago with a defense that win games wins games for you. It's like the fact that Chicago, that Justin Fields who I would put in the conversation if not number one and this 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 may be blasphemous, but I, I don't think I've seen a better running quarterback than Justin Fields in my lifetime. I don't think I've seen a better wow. running quarterback because you can say really? guys are, are you can say guys are faster. You can say guys are bigger. I don't know anybody that big and that fast. The combination. So whereas Kent, whereas Kent, and, and and like this dude was hurting people the way he would run run over people, okay, and running past them and around them and through them. His elusiveness was vickish. His physicality was Newtonish, okay. And so I don't yeah. know why, for the life of me, why from day one all the way till his last day on his team, they weren't properly utilizing and exploiting. The gift that he had above all others. Instead, but they tried to make him oftentimes yeah. somebody that he wasn't, and maybe that speaks to his limitations, Michael. And maybe, maybe right, that's, that, all that's, that's all he's ever going to be. There it is. Maybe that's all he's ever going to be. And but all I'm saying that, that, is, but, and that's, I right. don't think we can that's, say for sure why. that he's a bust. We can't say for sure that he's a bust, and we can't say for sure that he's bad because of the circumstances that he was subjected to in Chicago. And yes, that is me giving him a pass. Maybe a better pass than he's ever thrown. But yeah, yes, I was gonna say, go I ahead, use, to, use a lot no, about him. I'm consistent. I'm consistent. <laughs> Give I'm him consistent. that line too. I refuse too. to believe that we have seen the best of Justin Fields. I'm gonna tell you this: I don't think you can be a good quarterback. You cannot be a good quarterback if the best thing that you do, if the best thing that you do was run the football, then you're not a good quarterback in, in professional no. football. No. Now, if it's, if well, that it's is, the best thing that he does, that's the and he best does it better than do, anybody else. But also, okay. Still, but but if your coach, but if hey, your you, you but if your coach ain't smart enough to put you in position to do what you do well, what does that say? Hey, what hey, does that I, say? I, I, I'm a coach. I'm a coach. I'm not gonna blame the coaches. My, I, I'm a coach who is. I've been told. This is what I've been told. This is my quarterback. Justin Fields is my quarterback. And if my quarterback is the best running quarterback I've ever seen in my lifetime, I agree with Michael Smith, best quarterback I've ever seen. I'm trying to disagree with you. I can't. Because yeah, you're right. Lamar is faster. Michael Vick is faster, but uh, but Justin Fields is is as fast or a notch below, but more physical than both of them. And Cam Newton might be more was more physical than Justin Fields, but not as fast. So you put it all together, right? But if the if the best thing he does, my quarterback, is run the football. That, that's just not enough. That's not the position. But see, the he position ain't your calls for more. I, I need more. You know, he absolutely does. But he's also not your quarterback. And therein lies the problem with Chicago, like or, or with Justin Fields. He was not their quarterback. He was not the guy that Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus drafted. And if see, Ryan Poles and if that's the way and they Matt think, Eberflus had drafted Justin Fields, they would have they would have brought in Keenan Allen for Justin Fields. Well, or can I tell you they this? would be out the or they would be out the door with him. If if they think that way, I'm not sure they do, but if they do think that way and anyone who thinks that way will not be successful. Look, uh, check your ego, suppress your ego. You will be in whether you're a, a football coach or whether you're no. an editor or or whether you are running, uh, you're, you're the head of a, a law firm or anything like that. You're going to have people who you didn't bring in who have value yeah. and are successful and are talented and you got to, to to get to where you want to go. You got to work with them. I, but I Mike, I don't think it's Justin ego. Fields I don't think it's brought ego. It by somebody. I don't else. think it's ego. No, it's not ego. Oh, it's it self preservation. Is. No, I think it's most self preservation. And here's why I say that. Okay. Now, just understand I could cape up for Justin Fields, right? Which is which is what I've been doing, yeah. right? But I'm also acknowledging that what he has put on film or on paper 
it leaves a lot to be desired from a passing perspective, yeah. right? So if you're mm -hmm. Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus, Matt Eberflus especially, but right, but even Ryan Poles, like, are you if you don't know for sure that Justin Fields is the guy, you don't know that for sure because there are plenty of examples. I mean, you know, of, of organizations that drafted a player and, and moved on from him, even if it was their player because they, they didn't think he was that guy, right? In this instance, if, if you're Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus, and you don't know that Justin Fields is the guy, and he's going into his fourth year, and next year is his rookie option, and you're coming up on having to make either 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 shit or get off the pot, you got to make a long-term commitment to my guy, or you got to let him, or you got to move on, and this is somebody else's draft choice, you're not going to let a guy you're uncertain about cost you your job. I don't think that's ego. I think that's self-preservation. Like if they don't, if, if Justin feels as bad as you and others think he is, why would Ryan Post let somebody stick with somebody else's guy and say, you know what? But he's got potential and, and, and we, we don't know, but we're going to see because, you know, we want to do right by him and we want to give, give him another shot. Now you're like, look, if you go get fired, you're going to lose, lose with your guys or lose, lose. your way. Yeah, lose yeah. on your own terms. Yeah, you lose on your own terms. Yeah, so that, that part I understand. I'm just saying I don't think he ever really had a chance to maximize his potential. I think in Pittsburgh, here's another reason why I'm not buying this idea that, that, that Russell Wilson is the starter and Justin Fields is the backup in March. Because if Pittsburgh were content with Russell Wilson, number one, they're paying him $1.2 million. So it's easy to say that now and it's easy to change it later. If Pittsburgh were content with Russell Wilson, they were good to go. And he was going to be the starter. There was no competition. Then why did they trade for Justin Fields? It because was yes, it was pennies. It was pennies. They're smart. They're exactly. Smart. It's just smart. They're, exactly. It's just, just, exactly. It's just developing. You have your guy right now. You're starting a clear starter. Clear starter. Yeah. And Russell. Oh, Wilson. stop with clear. the clear starter. Okay. Clear. And yeah. Just like just they just, intend to sign him to a long-term deal after this season too. That, that, I right? like that. Okay. I like that. Oh, that, that it's that March. Nice it's March. That's it was a nice, a nice touch. touch. That's very. It was a nice That's very touch. performative. That's very performative very shrewd. of them. Very shrewd. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We say whatever you got to say to it. Say whatever you got to say. That's right. Te Every, you can say it all right now. Te tell me you love me. I love you. That's like okay. You, know, you say you. whatever you got to say. Say whatever. You so, love but they got a guy love thirty-five, whatever you gotta say. and then they got a guy twenty-five. So mm -hmm. thirty-five for right now, twenty-five for the future, theoretically. It's good business. And you said you've known Omar Khan for a long time. You need to reach out to Omar Khan and say, hey, uh, you're doing a hell of a job, man. How you and know I haven't? I didn't even know how this. You know he didn't how do you know even... he didn't consult me? How do you know he didn't consult me? By hey, the way, he might have. You know, sidebar. We were talking sidebar. last week. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's your sidebar? No, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say, we were t when we were talking last week about the Steelers and how they've changed, I didn't even yeah. know at the time that that Omar has changed the way business is being done with and the he's Steelers. A I mean, like tan tangibly, he's all, and he's also example, a lifer, which is crazy. Example, right? He's been there his whole life. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Kevin Colbert, his predecessor, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Colbert brought in Kenny Pickett. I think that was one of his last acts as general manager. I think it was the last over. graphic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But some of the scouts that Colbert brought in a lot of those guys were not renewed. I'm not rooting for anybody to lose uh, positions or lose income, but a lot of those scouts were not renewed by Omar Khan. He brought in a new crop of just a new way of doing business uh, there on the south side in Pittsburgh. And even though he's been there for a long time, he has different ideas of how the Steelers should be run. And I think you're seeing some evidence of that right now. I didn't even realize that at the time when I said, well, no, you just no, you, no, you just clear, you just clairvoyant. You're just clairvoyant. But you just that, know your shit. Well, I didn't, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying all that. I'm not well, saying all that. It, but look, maybe during football look, season with my bets, but not right now. Okay, but speaking of bets, the Steelers are hedging theirs. You know what I mean? Like Russell Wilson, he, sure they could say he's a starter, and, and his body of work deserve he deserves to be named the starter. And they, they got him in there by telling him what he needed to hear to feel like he was going to be the starter. But they brought Justin Fields in to compete, slash develop. If it if it turns out that he that it takes him a season to develop and maybe they get a compensatory pick on the back end and no harm no foul if he walks in free agency after this year, but I, I it would it would surprise me if Russell Wilson held this job what I, based on what I think I know about Russell Wilson and what I've seen from Russell Wilson 
over the past couple of years and I understand in Denver there were a lot of funky things going on the same thing I'm saying about Chicago uh, and fields yep. can apply to Russ yes. and Denver in many respects. Okay, I recognize that I believe that fields before this season is done will be the starting quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, but so this is the sidebar. I read off all those stats and you cited all those stats. The most damning thing about Justin Fields continues to be that the biggest Ohio State homer that I know does not ride for Justin Fields. <laughs> that continues to be the biggest shred of evidence. What did that tell you? Come on, what did that tell you? <laughs> that you that you that you take those Buckeye blinders off Come on. when it comes to talking about Justin Fields. Come that's, on. that's the biggest. That's I've that, that should convince me of nothing enough. else that I'm wrong about I've Justin Fields. That that's all you need to know. If, if nothing <laughs> there else. There you go, man. There you go. So as far as the Bears go, by the way, this oh, is a, here is we it, go. Wait, wait, but one last note. One last note. I do think there is something to be said for the market. I mean, for them to get feels for a six that could turn into a conditional fourth. Now, there's a report. I think it was Courtney Cronin at ESPN. There was a report that the Bears could have gotten more for Justin Fields, better draft compensation from a team with an established starter, but they wanted Fields to go somewhere where he could develop and uh, have more of an opportunity. And they want to do, that's what I kept referencing when they did want to do right by him. Okay, that's the report, which I choose to believe. Don't believe everything you read. This is a newspaper. It's 90% bullshit. <laughs> but it entertains but it entertains me. me. Okay? <laughs> okay? I, pre- I choose to believe that. Because I choose to believe that Justin Fields. They could have gotten more. Let me get this straight. I, <laughs> they could have gotten more for Justin Fields. Okay? They could have gotten more compensation for Justin Fields. But because they enjoy him so much, they really want the best for him. Because they, they really know, they, the they, know they did him dirty. They know they did him dirty. They know that that dude did not have a chance. In hell, a snowball chance in Chicago, they and now dirty. they no, they didn't sat up not. here and brought in DeAndre Swift and Keenan Allen and Gerald yes. Everett and all these fancy things for for the new guy. Okay, <laughs> they got the they're hooking up the new guy, <laughs> and I did like you know what dog, okay. you right, you but right. This- Ryan Poles like you right dog, you know what you right, you right, you know what Come man, on. hey 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 dog, them the brakes. Then the brakes. No. So look, look here. Look here. For your trouble. Have, he didn't okay. have Keenan Allen. He didn't have Keenan Allen, but you know what he had? He had DJ Moore. He had, he had DJ Moore. Year. And DJ Moore had a career. He had Cole Komet. He had Cole Komet. He, he had Darnell Mooney. He had Mooney. Who just, I mean, those when are, he wasn't hurt. When he wasn't hurt. Yeah. Those are Mooney good, just I mean, got paid in Atlanta. Players. It it wasn't, and I know he came back and cleaned it up because he had to because it was bad, but nobody made him say, hey, Justin. What do you think is going on with you? Why, you know, why is it hard for you to make this transition? He goes, oh, I don't know, coaching. Nobody made him say that. <laughs> he said that on his own. Hey, man. He said coaching. You know how, but you know how frustrating the coaching must be for you to say that out loud, for you to say the quiet part out loud, okay? You know man, how many conversations must have preceded that moment <laughs> before he got There's to a so point many. where he could no longer keep it to himself? Eventually, you get to the point as a quarterback where, okay, you, you, you check off the uh, it's not the offensive line. It's not the OC. It's not your weapons. It's not the environment, you know, like, <laughs> hey, you listen, I would eventually is you got to look at yourself and say it's not good enough. And look, I don't, I'm with you. I don't think he is finished. I don't think he is officially a bust. He's going down that path, though. He's not officially a bust. I think it really came down to Justin Fields playing before he was ready to play. And some guys, I, 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 we, yeah. we all, yeah. a, a, a lot of quarterbacks yeah. wish they could get the uh, Green Bay treatment. You know, whether you're Aaron Rodgers or, or, or yeah. Justin Love. Is that yeah. his name? Jordan. Or, or Jordan, Jordan Love. Okay. Say, who's Justin? <laughs> Jordan Love. It's, right. it's okay. Uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> or Jordan Love. No matter yeah. who you are, it, you'd like to get, give me like two or three years to apprentice and figure this thing out behind somebody. Patrick, who Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes waited a what year. What they're doing. A I, year. I, I, don't, I can't, hey, I can't think of a situation. You're talking, about, you, you're talking about you can't think, about, think of a situation. You, you can't talk about you can't think of a situation where a, a, a quarterback has a bad win-loss record 
and is a good quarterback. I can't think of a situation yes. where a quarterback has sat and has been to his detriment. I can't think of it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, whether it's Carson Palmer uh, back yeah, in the day Kittner. behind John Kitna. John Kitna. But you know, think yep. about the guys we mentioned. So Aaron Rodgers got to watch Brett Favre and Jordan Love got to watch Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes got to watch Alex Smith and think about those off those coaches for wh whether it's the head coach or the OC mm. all uh -huh. that knowledge. Mm. And so I, I think right sounds now like, you know, for, just, sounds for, like you're describing a system. Sounds like you're you describing a system. system. They're all because they're all system quarterbacks. And I'm going to change you, that. I'm going to change that because system quarterback has such a negative connotation. It shouldn't. They're all you're changing they're the all narrative. Circle, it's imperative all to change the narrative. Okay, but for the people who are to understand it, there are they're all circumstance quarterbacks. How's that? They're all circumstance quarterbacks. Okay. Every last one of them without without exception. They're all circumstance quarterbacks. Even the ones and, that have won and, in multiple places. Both those places had to have a certain infrastructure and supporting cast around them for them to succeed. And the final thing I'll say about Justin Fields. Is he is a, a circumstance quarterback who is in a great situation. That's why there's no way in hell that he's going to play 51% of the snaps for the Steelers because they know what he needs. What he needs to mm. do is sit mm. there in a good organization okay. behind okay. a good quarterback with a good OC and he needs to reset. watch and watch. Maybe. Can they, it'd be great for him. It'd be, it'd be the best thing for him. I don't, well, I don't know if it's the best thing for them because almost as bad as so it's not gonna be the last thing you say about Justin Fields. I'm, I apologize. Almost as bad as putting Justin Fields on the field and not utilizing him to his strengths. Almost as bad as that is keeping him on the on the sideline and not using him at all. I don't know that it's in the best interest of the Pittsburgh Steelers to have a player like Justin Fields. I mean, because you know how these coaches like to play mind games with people anyway. If nothing else have people prepare for Justin Fields and what he right, and, right. And, and, and his ability. Um, even if it is packages or package of plays or I just I don't think it's in the Steelers best interest short or long term to not give Justin Fields some reps some significant reps this year. Again, I believe there'll be starters mm. reps, but even if not because okay after this year, I mean, you're not, not. I can't imagine they picking up his option. They're not gonna pick up his fifth-year option. So after this year, they, he walks as a free agent, and you and you you may get a compensatory pick in return. So maybe it's just one big circuit way of, uh, you know, make one big route to a better draft pick from Omar. I, I doubt it. I think if if they actually think he has potential for the long term, I think they got to see that in the short term. But it also helps them. It also helps them. But again, I, I think he'll end up being a starter anyway. So it'll be a moot point. I think he'll end up beating out Russell Wilson. I think I think they I think it will be. Look, Russ may win the job week one, but as the season goes on, I think Russ's limitations will show. Russ will Russ will frustrate frustrate them, and that urgency that you talked about, that new day of doing things in Pittsburgh that you talk about, will reveal itself yet again when they decide to make a move to the younger guy and see what they got. Okay, once they mm -hmm. once they realize how limited okay. Russ is at this point in his career. So, right. um, but you can only get. What somebody will pay. That's what I, that's what I was going to say about Justin Fields, but uh, away from that, uh, aside from that convenient report about they could have had more, but they took less to do him a solid. But <laughs> the, the market disagrees right. with me. The, the, there was not this robust market. Everybody else that needed a starter went in a different direction. Apparently, the consensus was that he was going to be a backup somewhere, which, like you said, I, I do I do like that. I mean, I, I could see that. If, if he's what I think he is, maybe the best thing for him is to take a, a, a gap year, a reclass, as the kids do um, nowadays. So I, I don't look at it as the Bears got fleeced again. I, 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 think, I think the Steelers got a steal, but I don't look at it as the Bears got fleeced again by the Steelers, as they did with the Chase Claypool trade, because I don't think that the Bears, I can't even, I, what, what does better capital mean? Does it mean you know, uh, a pick in this year's draft, probably, but is it still probably a late pick with conditions attached? Who knows? But I don't know that they were going to get the moon and the stars. Uh, Nobody was going to move heaven and earth to get Justin Fields. Um, you know so what? whether that's true or not that they were doing a solid by him, 
I think they needed to do it now. That's the other angle to the story is like, well, why did it if this is all they could get some have asked, why didn't Ryan Poles wait? Why didn't he wait to see if somebody else got an injury or, or if, if, if something else happened? Uh, if somebody didn't get the quarterback they wanted in the first round or second round of the draft and got desperate for a quarterback, why didn't they wait? He said at the combine, he said it is. He said it, there's some, we're going to be fair to Justin. We're not going to let Nobody this linger. Nobody likes living gray. Yeah. Nobody likes to live in gray. I think for both parties, for Justin, but also for the Bears, if you're going to turn the page, turn the page. If you're going to jump, if you're going to jump, don't f around with it. Do it expeditiously. Go ahead and jump, Sam's. And, and the Bears said, you know, we're not going to drag this thing out. We're not going to keep talk radio, you know, and the fan fodder going. We're not going to bring Caleb Williams into this situation. We are moving on, okay, well, whoever they draft, we are moving on into the future, and that future does well, not deserve, does not include things. Justin Fields, so he doesn't deserve to be drug along. Yes. A couple things. One, uh, last week, I think it was last week or a couple weeks ago, you said, I don't know if you remember saying this about Ryan Poles. You said, hey, I like what they're doing. I like what he's building. I do. I do. In Chicago. And I, I said, well, what exactly is he building? And now you look at it, still number, still pick one. Still pick nine for now. Uh, uh -huh. You got you got Keenan. I mean, uh, Keenan Allen. That was just a, that's just a brilliant. That's that was a, a stroke. Trade, that was a stroke. Uh, yeah, it was for for the Bears. And then you know, as you mentioned, Gerald Ever, DeAndre Swift. I mean, they really. And then last year, picking up, getting up, uh, getting Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat from the yeah. Commanders, and yeah, and signing him to a new contract. I mean, Correct. just really some, some smart moves there. Bringing in Shane Waldron, who worked with Geno Smith, and understands mm -hmm. like you know uh, oh, how to how to bring a quarterback along. I mean, just really some nice and, moves and, by and, the Bears. And by the way, for, but, one, one last thing about the Steelers that I love for us, not only not all for Justin, not only the opportunity to step back, but for all the you know criticisms people may have about Russell Wilson. I don't know that anybody has suggested that he's not good in the quarterback room because you mentioned Geno Smith. Geno Smith publicly had nothing but positive things to say about what he was able to learn from Russ and and how and how Russ, right. you know, what kind of colleague Russ was. So good, so good for uh, Justin in that regard. But go ahead, back to Chicago. I'm just curious. Why do you keep saying, "Oh Lord, Caleb Williams"? Or what do you? Oh, know? what what? Oh, what do I? Know? <laughs> you know something. Oh man, you know something. What have you, what have you heard? You heard something. What's up? Come on now. I don't believe. What I is this? Is this Drake May? Is this uh, Jaden Daniels? I don't believe you. Is this trade now. What's you. up? What's up? So let me so Thumbs let me get up. this straight. And the best you can come up with is a drunk stop. <laughs> um, I, I, I have been watching a lot of training day lately. No, I, I I don't I don't know anything. I don't know anything for sure. Okay. I don't. Okay. I don't know. Well, what do you think? Sure. All, I'm, all I'm saying is all I'm saying is that I, I think it's a an assumption uh, on our part to believe that Caleb Williams is a lock to go number one overall. Um, I, he may be the Consensus, uh, and I hesitate to even lie. use the word consensus. <laughs> you lie. I, I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I'm not. I'm not you lying. I'm not lying. Somebody, but you don't have to reveal your sources. I know you're lying. But anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Ahead. It's interesting. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. I'm listening. I, this I, is I, I informed. Hesitate, I hesitate. I hesitate. No, informed wait, speculation, no. folks. <laughs> no, informed speculation is when Michael Holly spent. Uh, the Saturday before Super Bowl 36 with Bill Belichick and Bill Belichick gave him his game plan for the Rams and it turned up turned up in Michael Holly's column that Sunday morning. <laughs> how to how to that's informed speculation. Um, <laughs> what I'm saying is um, I have to say consensus because consensus would you know suggest because there's a lot of people that you know aren't all in on Caleb Williams that 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 think Jaden Daniels is right there um, that it maybe even like Drake may. All I'm saying is Ryan Poles, first and foremost, and he understands what I'm talking about, about situational um, or circumstantial or system quarterbacks, as in, you know, everybody wants the next Patrick Mahomes, as Caleb Williams has been billed to be, but they, they, they conveniently forget the situation that Patrick Mahomes stepped into. And not to say he couldn't have been great somewhere else, but it really helped to walk into the stability and the infrastructure 
and 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 the supporting cast that he was able to inherit in in in, in Kansas City. Likewise, what Ryan Poles first and foremost has done, um, <laughs> going back to the nesting analogy, is gender neutral. Okay, you know what you're having? No, we want to be surprised. But this, but we got a we got a baby room already. Okay, right. so whether we draft Caleb Williams, says Ryan Poles, or or Jaden Daniels, or Drake May, okay, we still we got it we got, we got it ready for whatever quarterback comes steps in to succeed. And whichever quarterback comes to Chicago, I, I mean, I'm, I, I like to fancy myself as something of an NFL historian. Usually when a quarterback is taken number one overall, they have to be a savior and they have to bear the burden of an organization that's probably not ready for them, you know, in most, in most circumstances. I think, I think Indianapolis is an exception because remember Peyton got hurt and then, they, and then they bottomed out when Peyton got hurt and Luck came in. And I don't think his situation was bad in Indianapolis. And he might have been a playoff no. team that first year. Which they Chuck did. They were like a playoff team that first year. Yeah. Yep. Okay. They were. So, I, but I don't know of a better situation that a number one overall pick quarterback, be it Caleb Williams or somebody else, has, has walked into than the one that Ryan Poles has set up for his, for his next quarterback. So, when it comes to whether it is Caleb Williams or not, I, I think it will be Caleb Williams. But I'm just saying... I could see I could easily see a world in which I don't know Washington, you know, um, and an ownership group that's that's new and fresh and exciting and uh, with Magic Johnson and, and, and his L.A. ties um, and, and, and the super and the superstar, you know, DNA that he recognizes and whatnot uh, and, 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 Joe, and Joe Harris. Um, Josh, I could see a world. Josh Harris, I beg your pardon. Josh Harris, thank you. Um, I could, I could see a world in which they decide, hey Chicago, can we come up to one, bring Caleb Williams home, and Ryan Poles, in his calculated way, says, hey, I like Caleb Williams, but I like Jaden Daniels and Drake May just as much, or Drake May just as much. I'm perfectly happy. Moving down, creating, continuing to create generational wealth, the That's kind that I did not inherit when I came here, the kind that was not That's here when I came here, and letting right. that number one pick from the Panthers continue to reap benefits and flip it and flip it over and over again, right? And and take another quarterback, also set up to succeed, and yet pick up more and more assets. I think that evaluation process is still very much ongoing. The expectation is that it will be Caleb Williams, but it would not shock me. And, and we've seen surprises before. It would not shock me if the commanders in particular made, made a move to go up to one to get Caleb Williams at the price of an offer that Ryan Poles cannot refuse. And then Ryan Poles pivots to another quarterback. So this is me. interesting. I, I'll tell you it's interesting. Me. You know what? It's an interesting thought because you know Caleb Williams is the most. I guess he's the most decorated, but it's not. But but Jaden Daniels has got a Heisman, you know. I mean, it's not like. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like it's a huge. It's a huge gap, right? Between yep. number one and number two, and we know the Bears need a quarterback. In your scenario. They and that's all they did, by the way. That's all they did. All they confirmed by trading Justin Fields was that they're taking a quarterback. A, they're taking a quarterback. Not which quarterback. Not, not which quarterback. Yeah, you know, it's, yes. it's really a fair yes. point. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing I think about. So most, uh, the, most tonight, I, I guess some teams switch it up, but I don't know. Most teams operate on an eight-point scale. So you're, you're, you're 10, you're 10 out of 10. If you say, oh, she's a 10, he's a 10. In football, it's he's an eight. That's the highest. So I don't think if Caleb Williams was like rated as like a 7.75 and Jaden Daniels was like a 6.75, these are still good scores. These are great scores. Both of them. 675, that's a starter. Mm -hmm. Really good. Yeah, and then you wouldn't you wouldn't make a move, but I get the sense that Caleb Williams might be like a seven. And Jaden Daniels might be a six point eight five. Okay, what if you like what if you like the 6.85 better for your circumstance, Michael Smith? Better for your circumstance and your system more than you like the other guy. 
and you can just trade. You can make a trade and get another first. It's Washington, it's still Washington, so you can you can play games with them. And be like, hey, you want to come up from two to one? Uh, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you uh, a couple of picks. Uh, it's going. We're going to take your first next year, and we're going to need like you know second and a third. You keep that. You still hold on to nine, and you get a quarterback. I can see it. It makes sense. I mean, you and it could. It could. You got so I think you got if you're Ryan Poles in Chicago, you got to be so convinced. Well, and also it takes two to to tango. It's like, you know, somebody got to want to come up to get him. And so I think it's it behooves you to not tip your hand in any way. And they haven't. I mean, it could just be a situation where like, yeah, we drafted one of these quarterbacks. We're comfortable with one of them. We don't know which one yet. And nobody has Oof. to know which one. Wouldn't that be something? They're comfortable with. I, I, I think it's going to be Caleb. Like, if, I, if, if it were my bet, your money today, I would yeah. say it's Caleb. I would say it's Caleb. Um, but I could see a world in which somebody makes it interesting and gives them something to think mm -hmm. about and said, huh. And he said, huh, you know what? Drake May, like you said, Drake May is right there. Jay Daniels right there. Let's, uh, le le let's, let's Ooh, pick up like some more that. assets and, 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 and stock this cupboard. Uh, even more, um, but, but here's the here's yeah. the last here's the last thing I'll say about Chicago. Uh, the reason Omar Khan will not be executive of the year is because <laughs> Ryan, Ryan Poles, Poles Ryan Poles <laughs> got the inside track on it right now. I mean, just all these these moves, and it's not even of the year. It should be executive of of the last of the last two seasons, really. As I mentioned, <laughs> what he did last year and what he's done yeah. so far. And that that meant that Keenan Allen is just that is a brilliant move for it a is. fourth rounder in the last year it of is. his contract. Then you got to get him into a you can get him to a new contract, as he said, as Keenan said. Hey, I'm, I'm I'm quarterback friendly. I love that quote. I'm quarterback friendly. I'm just always I'm I'm there on the field. I know how to run routes. I know how to beat man. I know how, I know where the zones. I know what's happening. And I'm always there for yeah. the quarterback. On the field yeah. and off the field. My body language. He says my body me. language is good too. Ask about me. That's a great Ask move. about me. No, and it, it, yeah. you talked about the cautionary tale of, of 2021, which the Bears are obviously contributors to that cautionary tale. I, I think the best way to hedge your bet against a bust is to leave nothing to chance. And what Ryan yeah. Poles has done smart is is to say, because I mean even last year. He could have gotten impatient and said, I mean, look, they may they may rue the day still that they didn't stay at one and take a CJ Stroud. Okay? Or they, they may rue the day that they didn't stay at one and take Anthony Richardson, depending yeah, on how it works out right. with whoever they take this year. Right. Having said that, though, Ryan realized we aren't ready for a quarterback. We're not ready to have children. We're not financially stable enough. We're not mature enough to have children. <laughs> We're not ready for a quarterback. And so he's so this to me is the surest way to guard against a quarterback mm. becoming the latest example of poor development and support is by like putting everything you got into helping him come into a situation where damn it if all you're throwing is 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 is, is bubble screens. <laughs> and 50 50 balls. Yeah. I like your chances <laughs> with those two with more and Allen on the outside. I like the I like the I like your chance to say nothing of what yeah. else whatever else they're going to do to shore up the offensive line or defense where you're not his thing about Caleb Williams. You know how many shootouts Caleb Williams lost. You know how many times Caleb Williams lost 45 42 and yeah, USC defense was was terrible and one of the worst That's defenses in, in, in the country last year. Let's 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 bring in what what a what a concept. Let's bring in a quarter. Let's bring a quarterback into a situation where not only does he have weapons on offense to put up points and to make his job easier, where he's protected up front, but let's get him a defense, a young defense, okay, with a defensive-minded coach, contrary to the way people think it's got to go, with a defensive-minded coach, to where he ain't playing from behind all the time, to where he ain't getting killed, to where he ain't under pressure. Let's get him a running game. Let's show up the backfield. Even though it didn't look like running back was a need, let's go get a running back for him. Let's go get a, a mm. running back that, that, you, that you could throw the ball to. You can check it down to DeAndre Swift. Let's get him a defense that will keep him in games. 
you know, to where other teams can't tee off on our rookie quarterback. It's just brilliant. It is a blueprint. It is an absolute yeah, is. blueprint on how to support a young quarterback. Is it, You're right. It, Omar Khan you know might finish runner up to Ryan Poles. Because I can't think you of a better what, situation Mike? that a young quarterback is coming to. Yes. I might be trading up. <laughs> I might be trading up from two to one in Dynasty. I might be trading up to get Caleb Williams because that's a good situation. I might be trading up. Good we'll luck. See. Good we'll luck. See. You ain't even thought. I'm, I'm glad to see you thinking about Dynasty. You got two weeks till the startup draft. I'm glad to see it's on your mind. Um, Yo, hey, total tangent because we referenced the Patriots a couple of times. I want I want to know this from you. Yeah, and there's some BS. What? Go ahead. I, I think I know where you're going with this. Go ahead. So the last two episodes of uh, the Dynasty came out, mm-hmm. and they examined the Malcolm Butler benching in Super Bowl Fifty Two, the loss against the Eagles. Um, <laughs> what what could the personal I thought it was never personal for Bill Belichick. What could the personal yeah. reason be? And it's not doesn't even is it did he cuss him out? Like what could he what would the inner what would the social and personal intersection of Malcolm Butler and Bill Belichick be to where Bill Belichick would decide? You know what? Like as much as people talk about Spygate, Deflategate less so. That was more of a Brady thing. But as much as people detest Bill Belichick for the way he's conducted himself at press conferences and in the media, as much as Patriot haters, and I'm not one of them, and I know you aren't either, as much as Patriot haters like to talk about, you know, the, the cheating Patriots and, and like to put an asterisk next to Bill Belichick's legacy because of Spygate, this, this does not get the attention it deserves outside of New England. This, I, for a coach who, it, who built his brand and his legacy on I'll do what's best for the team. I do what's best for the not team. Not doing what's best for the team in the biggest moment is the ultimate asterisk next to a, a next to his legacy. I mean, is that, I'm not saying six Super Bowls is not enough, but could you have seven? Could he have seven? Could well, Brady have became, eight? Like, oh yeah, my God. Do what's best like, for the team. Personal? Because I, I always a, thought it was some. I thought it was something personal with Malcolm Butler. I thought it was something that Malcolm Butler had done or something he was going through that the team was trying to protect from getting out publicly. You mean to tell me like he had beef with Malcolm Butler? What, what kind of beef? Man, you, grill that I, shit up and eat it. <laughs> or, just, or, or sort like, it out after the Super Bowl. Mike, because you have spent some time in Boston, you know how this goes. Do you, you know how many times that happened? That was a... Uh, uh, 2017 season. So it was like seven years ago. Seven years ago. You know how many times since 2017 people have come up to me and either said, hey, what's the real story with Malcolm Butler? Or, and this is such a Boston thing. Hey, you want to know what happened with Malcolm Butler? Yeah, man, I do want to. Well, I'll tell you what. This is what I heard. <laughs> like, I've heard so many people tell me, like, really? 15 different versions of what they think happened with Malcolm Butler and the stories are way out there. I mean, one of them is he was hurt. He had a concussion. The Patriots knew he shouldn't have been on the field. They protected him. Other story. That's he got I, into I it with Belichick. Like it was curfew. There were, you know, this is, you know, all kinds so of Eugene Robinson type stuff made, made for made for LMN type stories, <laughs> you know, uh, the uh, you know stuff was the coaching set like all all every story you can imagine, all of them have been on the table with Malcolm Butler and we still don't know, and I'm not surprised that it was personal with Belichick and that he got in the way, he let something personal get in the way of the team because that became a slogan for him. Part of Bill Belichick's demise in New England was that was a slogan. The slogan he didn't live up to it. Hey, I do what's best mm. for the team. No, you don't. You don't always mm. do it. You don't do what's best for the team. And you stop mm-hmm. doing that maybe five years before Malcolm Butler. So that was, was 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 I do what's best for the team? Is that what he said internally or just externally? Because if it's just an external slogan, it strikes me as 
This just this just a way of not giving y'all anything. I'm not giving y'all the satisfaction right. of explaining myself to y'all. So instead of instead explain of explaining, it. I do what's best for the team. He didn't explain it. He didn't explain it to the players too. And I think that's what happened. Bill Belichick, just just to be clear, Bill Belichick, the game has not passed Bill Belichick by. Stra uh, strategically, he can sit down with anybody in football right now and slice them up. Sure. Anybody in football, you name sure. them. I don't care who it is, he'll slice them up. But Matt uh, Matthew Slater said something about Belichick when Belichick wrote the letter for Trump and he said, I don't think he was connected enough to his players to understand what a big move this was for him. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the issue. It's connection. He's he's a strategist who lost connection to his players and he felt like he could just do he could just act like this is 2005 2006. No, buddy. It ain't like that. We don't roll like that. Not anymore. So your players demand more. You got to have you got to be more dimensional than you were that whole do your job and uh, you know, just do as do as I say, not what I, not what I do. No, it doesn't work anymore. And so I think when he's away from football, he's going to have to step up that part of his game because that part was lacking uh, in the last few years of his career with the Patriots. So so I'm not in any way. You know this, this I told you so is not me dancing on anybody's professional grave. I got the utmost respect for what Bill Belichick has accomplished, what he's meant to the history of this game. Um, but and we never talked about this, you know, because of I mean, I, I was I was out for a while and just the, the cadence of the show. We never talked about the coaching carousel stopping without Bill Belichick having a job, which surprised yeah. me not at all because wow. I because it still I surprised but me. I told you but I but I told you I know you did when we, I know you I did told, I was like and I'm still I, surprised. I, I was like I'm not I'm not hiring him I'm not hiring because of all the things you just described because those six Lombardis and Tom Brady specifically ain't coming with him and I'm just I'm not whether you want to say the game has passed him by or he's lost touch or he's disconnected or whatever the case may be Bill Belichick to me was not this no brainer we got to get him higher um, that the speculation would have suggested that he was going to be once mm. he left New England was not shocked at all that there was not a robust market for Bill Belichick. Well, not I'll just tell you this. Not at all. I, 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 it's, just, it's shocking to me and I know it's it, it's a uh, you know, different industry. I, I'll just tell you this. If if I am struggling to make a film that matters and Martin Scorsese is available. Damn it. I'm hiring <laughs> Martin Scorsese like I mean, I just don't understand. Look, but Martin, even Martin Scorsese, the, is Martin Scorsese still making great movies or not? As far as yes. I know, he is. Okay, Bill yes. Belichick has has not been a great coach lately. He hasn't. But I will. T so, but I know even the flawed Bill Belichick. And his Leonardo DiCaprio flawed, is gone. <laughs> yeah, DiCaprio right, has right, moved on. <laughs> right. Even the flawed Bill Belichick is a top ten coach in football with all his flaws. He's a top ten. I've got a top ten coach in football. Who that don't mean any right fit. Has, that don't mean any right fit for what I'm trying to do. That don't mean any right fit what? with my owner. What do you that mean? Right what fit you with my general manager. The you right ain't got fit. a coach. You just fired your coach. You just fired. You just fired Arthur Smith. You just fired Mike Vrabel. You just fired. Who else got fired? I mean, you just fired. Uh, uh, who, who else got fired in the cycle? Uh, anyway, uh, Brandon. Staley, a lot of these names. You know, they went and got. They went and got Harbaugh instead. Yeah. Okay. Chargers right, 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 Staley. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Staley. He just fight. He just fight. You moved on from 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 Daly, and uh, Staley, and you, you don't want Bill Belichick? Are you kidding me? That's weird. I, I told. That's I, I, that. That's that in particular. I, I think the last time we talked about, it, I said I'd rather Jim Harbaugh than than Bill Belichick right now. Um, again, not celebrating that he's out. Maybe he comes back next year. But like this Malcolm Butler thing is it's, it's shit like this that lets me further. That know. was seven years. ago. Okay. <laughs> Still, and, 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 and that was seven years ago and you around if you stay around long enough. If you hang around, you know this you stay around long enough. You're you have enough. You have enough runway for triumphs and enough for people to be like, what the hell was that? Why'd you do that back in the sure. day? Now sure. the year after sure. the yeah. year after Malcolm Butler the very next year. His team gives up three points and they win the Super Bowl to Sean McVay and the Rams. Yeah. So that's the next year. Yeah. So hey, it's like, yeah. oh, it all went yeah. downhill after Malcolm Butler. Next year, no. they give up three points in no. the Super Bowl. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I mean, you do this, you do this job long enough, and I'm, you know, my yeah. reel of awful takes is very, very long. So I get it. You know, you're not, you're not gonna bat a thousand. Speaking of those Rams, uh, Aaron Donald retired since you and I last talked. Retired. Oh, maybe we should put an asterisk next to retired. Wow. Um, because who knows? He 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 literally filed a letter before, <laughs> and then end up signing a new contract. But this feels real. This this feels very real um, in terms mm-hmm. of him stepping away uh, after 10 um, phenomenal. Phenomenal is an understatement. Mm-hmm. Uh, you and I often talk about <laughs> you and I often talk about uh, our Madden franchise days. And there were two players that we drafted who had unparalleled careers. I drafted this defensive end named Julius Rucker, who played for like Julius Rucker, fifteen years and had double-digit sacks every year. You drafted this safety named Mo Roberts, and so ever since then we've been talking about trying to find players like Julius Rucker and Mo Roberts. I say all that to say, like people don't give a shit about that, but uh, since this is a Michael and Michael thing, Aaron Donald's resume is out of Madden. Like yeah. he's a creative player. He's a creative it player. It doesn't seem real. He's the prototype. It's unreal. I, I just like just this, this from the athletic. I got I got to rattle this off from the athletic. Okay. He saw double teams on 40.5% of his pass rushes from 2018 to 2023. So just within the context of that. All right. Here's his career. Here's some of his career in perspective. He played 10 years, but he retires tied with Reggie White, Bruce Smith, and Lawrence Taylor, who played 15, 19, and 13 years respectively, with eight first-team All-Pro seasons. He had eight first-team All-Pro seasons in 10 years. Here's the list of players who played more than eight seasons and made the Pro Bowls every year. And made the Pro Bowl every year. Aaron Donald, Barry Sanders, 10 times in 10, uh, 10 times in his career and Jim Brown at nine. Okay. He leads the NFL in total pressure since 2018. When I mentioned he was double teamed damn near half the time. He had 112 more than the next closest at his position. Okay. I mean, the numbers and the, and the resume don't yeah. do him justice. When you think about what he had to go through to get to the quarterback the way he did better than arguably anybody uh, in his generation, if not of all time at the defensive tackle position. Hey, see, you said what he had to go through. You're talking about the double teams being double teamed, you know, 40% of the time. And and this is a time of year. I just want to, you know, let me just encourage somebody out there. And this is because this is a time of year, especially if you are a student. Uh, sometimes students learn, hey, did I get into that school I was trying to get into, whether it's uh, getting into a high school or, you know, coming up next month, getting into a college or early decision. Listen, that's not the that's not the end of the story. Aaron Donald, as great as as you just said, he is Michael and he is all the greatness for Aaron Donald. That wasn't predicted for him. This is a Pittsburgh mm-hmm. kid who was not a five star recruit. He was not a four star recruit. He was a three star recruit coming out of high school. He pretty much had to convince people that this undersized defensive tackle could get it done at the collegiate level. Didn't have a lot of scholarship offers. Winds up at Pittsburgh was not the number one overall pick in the draft. They went high went in the 13. first round. I think number 13. 13. Yeah. yeah. So the, the road traveled by mm-hmm. Aaron Donald was not one that was just it was not just pristine. Everything is, is going to be easy for him and he got to a level of greatness. And so I just think when we we celebrate these players and Aaron Donald's not the only one. Uh, Jerry Rice was another one. Mississippi Valley State middle of the first round. Tom Brady. We mentioned him earlier pick number 199. There are a lot of guys who have reached that level, but it was not just put on a platter for them. They they showed that they they had something in them that was deep in them that other people didn't recognize, and they were hell bent on showing people, 
Hey, I got a lot more. There's a lot more in reserve than you think. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my gifts uh, and share my gifts with the world. So I, I applaud Aaron Donald. And those of you out mm. there, take inspiration from him. Yeah. Uh, not only um, is there inspiration in this story uh, for me, and, and especially for young people, like you said, especially those who are going through the college application experience, uh, the way my yeah. oldest child is, uh, for example. Um, you know, I also obviously, you know, drew a lot of uh, pride, if I may say so, from Aaron Donald uh, as somebody who uh, was often uh, considered something of a doppelganger of, of Aaron Donald, mm. or maybe he was mine mm. because he's younger than me. Mm. Um, and, and, and to be clear, that's from the neck up, just to be clear, okay. from the neck up. And maybe yeah. not even the neck up, the chin up, because he got more muscles in his yeah. neck than I got in my whole body. So I would say from the chin yeah. up. If if I if I'm lucky, a neck up is me. And it's no still relation, being too by the generous. way. Are you no sure? Relation, no relation. No relation. You no sure? relation. And again, I'm flattered. Okay. I, I I am flattered. Believe me, uh, that somebody would think that I look like uh, like Aaron Donald. Um, but you know, I think that's just one of those like all lights can do is look alike type things. Um, but you said it. I, but what I do. But what I do. <laughs> but what I do wish. I wish I could be as good at my job. As, as Aaron Donald was at his. A few people have been at their good at their job, as good at their job, and as better at their job than everybody else, than their contemporaries, mm. as Aaron Donald was for 10 years. And that's why, to bring up you know, an argument that we've had previously, I remember you feeling some kind of way because I couldn't say without a doubt that Tom Brady was the best player of all time. And I, I know he's the best quarterback of all time, but players like Aaron Donald, we, I, I don't know that I could say that Tom Brady was better at his job than Aaron Donald was at his. They just did different jobs. Yeah. You know? I, same, whether it was Jim Brown, who we referenced a second ago, or Lawrence Taylor, or Reggie White, or Barry Sanders, or Jerry Rice, or Deion Sanders. Like, there are so many great players who just didn't play quarterback. And to say, because somebody played a more prestigious and more important position when it comes to this team sport that is pro football or that is football, that makes them the best player of all time. I, I, I can't say that when I, re, when I rattle off the resume of, of Aaron Donald. And I'm not saying he's a better than Tom Brady. So it's not Mike, Michael Smith is not saying that Tom, Aaron Donald ranks higher on the all-time greatest players list than Tom Brady. No, I'm saying I think it's a flawed comparison. I think I think it's mm. harder. I think it's even harder to compare players at different positions in different eras in football than it is in basketball. You know, I mean, we could talk about yeah. that a lot with, with, with basketball when it comes to to centers and and guards and and, and forwards and, and and the different eras and the way the game has evolved over the years. How it, it's somehow pointless and fruitless, or sometimes pointless and fruitless, to compare the greatness of a LeBron James to the greatness of a Bill Russell, or the greatness of a Shaquille O'Neal to the greatness of a Kobe Bryant. In football, I think it's even more of an exercise in futility to try to say that this quarterback is a better football player than this defensive tackle. I, I don't I don't know how you okay, do it. Well, how about this? Do you think uh, let's simplify it? Do you think Aaron Donald and it's probably too early for this, but is Aaron Donald better than Lawrence Taylor? You know, I, I would I would not or say Reggie he was. White. So Reggie Reggie White is, is probably my favorite defensive player of all time. Um, I, I would not personally and this is very personal. There may be metrics and statistics to, to refute this, but I would not rank large, I would not rank Aaron Donald over Reggie White or Lawrence Taylor. Reggie White, not just because he was so dominant, but more from an affection standpoint, uh, having grown up watch, watching him, having grown up watching him the way I did. But Lawrence Taylor, as you know, literally revolutionized the game. Now, you can say the same about Aaron Donald in terms of that three technique. He became the prototype, you know, kind of took that torch oh, from yeah. a John Randall and became the prototype. And people were looking when people are looking for the next X. That's when you're a game changer. When they're looking for somebody like you henceforth now yeah. and forevermore. So you could say Aaron Donald was a game was a game wrecker and a game changer. Lawrence Taylor was more of a game revolutionizer in terms of like, yeah, we can't block these dudes with tight ends anymore. 
You know what I mean? Like, like, they, like the way that Joe Gibbs in particular had to adjust the way he, he ran his offense. One of the most ingenious offensive masterminds in, in NFL history and Joe Gibbs had to change the way he blocked because of Lawrence Taylor. Like of the Lawrence idea Taylor. of the blind yeah. side, the idea of the blind side protector. That starts with Lawrence Taylor, you know, so I, I have a hard time putting any defensive player and very few if any offensive players ahead of Lawrence Taylor when it comes to Michael Smith's rankings, but that's what but I'm saying. Like, he's, he's in the conversation. He's in the conversation. He's in that oh, he's conversation. In the conversation. He's sitting he's in, in VIP conversation with those dudes. Absolutely. After 10 years. Absolutely. Um, bravo to, to Aaron Donald. Shout out to my, my girl Erica, his, his lovely wife and their, and their beautiful family. Um, yeah, what a, what a run. What a run. Uh, and, he, and, and he got that, it got that ring. Or he got, he got that and we Super saw Bowl that. Ring. I believe saw that happen. We're there for it. We're there for it. In, in the we're there for it. We thought that was gonna be it for him. We thought that was gonna be it. Thought he was gonna walk yeah, away after that game, over. right off into the sunset. Yeah, got yeah. paid one well, last time. Good for him. Good for him. Well, next time you right, see man. him is at the uh, is at the family reunion. So uh, just invite <laughs> me to that. The Spider Man meme. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate you. I'll talk to you later. All right, brother. Take care. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.